We're probably going to do this manually. We may automate it, but you'll probably find the cab board saying, well, I don't know, it's pretty, it's pretty risky. I'm not sure we just want to kind of automate the deleting and rebuilding of the entire infrastructure's golden images. Yeah, I'm not so happy about that. Let's, let's make sure that there's somebody there. And hang on a minute, we don't want to break anything, and we want to make sure we play it safe, so let's do it in a maintenance window. Okay, great. So, so Bob works overnight uh, on dealing all of these things. He doesn't break it. Oh, but he broke one thing because it's very easy to make these kind of mistakes. And oh dear, Bob got fired. Because why? These machines have got different IP addresses and suddenly all the configurations are broken. Ah, bummer. We should have thought about that. So, okay, it's a straw man. But broadly speaking, scale this out to hundreds of nodes or thousands of nodes across three data centers. Or scale this to something a little bit more, but there's only one person. Uh, I was speaking to Chris just now. Chris is the sole sysadmin in his organization. Uh, how many machines do you manage, Chris? About 20 of them. Yeah, 20 or so. But if you did those with, with images and you had to do a, a, a lot of changes and a lot of repeats, um, your job would probably be harder than it is right now. OK? So what this actually leads to uh, is configuration desperation. Oh my god, help me. How am I going to solve this problem? Well, guess what? <laughs> chef solves the problem. Well, I believe Chef solves the problem. So, how does Chef work? Very, very simple. Chef works because we let you write programs. Okay, so these programs go about generating the configurations that you need directly on your nodes. So on every machine that you need to manage, every piece of configuration, every kind of resource that you need, you write programs which generate those configurations on the nodes. Suddenly, you've reduced your problem to something really quite manageable, because what you're doing is writing what is fundamentally a really fairly simple program. These can then be version controlled, and they can be shared, and they can be standardized, and they can be tested. So these programs maintain the state of your machines, and they're responsible for generating the configuration which makes your infrastructure work. How do we do that? Well, we do this by having a declarative interface to resources. So when I say declarative, what I mean is you say what you want to do, not how you want to do it. So you're going to specify, rather than package foobar uh, sorry, rather than saying um, you want to log onto a machine and type uh, package add such and such, but then you have to realize that this one's actually using IPS, so you need to use a slightly different, uh, slightly different syntax, or uh, maybe you want to say I'm managing a, a network configuration on this machine, uh, but it's an old machine, and so we're using uh, the old-fashioned kind of form, or maybe we're using a Solaris 9 machine, and we've all, uh, we're going back to using init, uh, init mechanisms instead of SMF. Um, instead of doing that, you just declare the state you want. Install this package. Make this network look like this. <clears throat> Manage this file. Install this user. Start this service. Stop this service. Signal this service in a certain way. So what Chef does is it pulls down policy. So what's policy? Policy is really simple. Policy is, what do you want it to do? I sit down with you in the pub and I say, let's build a machine for our friend because he wants to run a blog. What's the policy? Well, the policy is Apache should be installed, MySQL should be installed, WordPress should be installed, that's about it. Oh, maybe we need a user. Oh, yeah, I guess it should have a backup agent. Oh, it should probably have some monitoring agents. But broadly speaking, that's the policy. We're not talking about detail. We're talking about what it should look like. And then Chef pulls that policy down from a chef server. And what that means is, if you've got a large number of machines, and one of them was down for maintenance, as soon as it comes back up again, it will pull its policy straight away. You don't need to go, ah, oh, shit, I forgot about that one. Am I allowed to say shit on a recording? Ah, yeah. uh, well, I didn't say the other one. Uh, so, uh, so that's the kind of the idea. We have a declarative interface to resources. So CF fundamentally is infrastructure as code. Now, infrastructure as code is something I'm really passionate about. I wrote a book about it. Uh, I've written a few blog posts about it. I believe that infrastructure as code is a paradigm 
is a really interesting and really powerful idea. So what we're really doing is we're programmatically provisioning and programmatically configuring our systems. So basically, we can then treat the stuff that we're writing like any other code base. We treat it with the same kind of uh, practices that have developed over the last 10 to 15 years in the software development world. Practices like writing tests. Practices like having a shared set of standards. Practices like perhaps working in a, in, in a, a team of two. Practices like code review. All sorts of things that we can do. What that means is that you can reconstruct your business from a code repository, a data backup, and bare metal resources. So Adam Jacob gives the, uh, Adam Jacob is the, the, the primary author of Chef. Okay, so Adam Jacob, uh, in a, what I would believe is a seminal article in an excellent book called Web Operations, O'Reilly book, Web Operations, Adam Jacobs paints the scene. He says, so uh, you're, you're sitting down uh, on the sofa with your wife, uh, and you've, you've just started the, the romantic comedy, and you've, uh, you've got a beer, and you've got some popcorn, and you're, and you're snuggled up, and it's you know, just maybe half an hour into the film, and suddenly your, uh, your, your phone goes off. And you look at it, and uh, it says, call urgently. So you call up, and they say, everything is down! The whole world is down! I mean, the data center has, has collapsed. I mean, we, we, are, we are completely dead. What do you do? So Adam says, okay, after you've stopped screaming, you hit pause on the video, you go to a cloud provider, and you provision some bare metal resources, I call them bare metal, but some core resources. <clears throat> you start to kick off uh, a restore, and you run your chef agent. And that is it. You run chef, chef can build, the entire infrastructure from one command, and that won't take very long. And the thing that will take the time is how long it takes you to restore your data. And once you've restored your data, you unpause the movie, you sit down and you carry on. Because it is that simple. What Chef allows you to do is reconstruct your business, and note I say your business, because the infrastructure that we're working on here is fundamentally about saving people's businesses and maintaining them. Reconstruct the business from a code repository, a data backup, and bare metal resources. So, it looks a bit like this. At this point, I must apologize, because um, <clears throat> I've had to throw this together uh, slightly more quickly than I would like, and so I've dropped stuff on which looks a lot like Linux. Um, so, that's just because some of my Solaris stuff, I didn't yet have permission to just stick it on slides and all that kind of stuff. So. That's not a problem, but the whole point is that it is actually uh, infrastructure and platform agnostic. So just to kind of take a little sidestep, Chef works on Solaris, it works on every variety of Linux, it works on BSD, it works on Windows. <clears throat> so all of this kind of stuff, the whole idea is that we're actually abstracting this. Remember I said you specify what you want to do, not how you want to do it. That means it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so. Uh, here's what it looks like. Package, NTP, action, install, end. So that's the, that's the code that we would write to install the package. Uh, so this is a template. Uh, a template is a file which gets rendered uh, dynamically. So we're going to render the NTP config. It's going to be rendered from a template file. We're going to specify that it should be owned by root, what the mode is. We're going to create it, and we're going to pass in some information. So we're going to specify what the time server should be, and then we're going to say that if the configuration changes, we should restart the service. So this is the kind of standard triplicate of things. Install something, configure it, and set up the service. So in a dozen or so lines of code, you've, uh, you've set that all up. So, or maybe it looks like this. Uh, install net, uh, NetSNMP. Um, this time, uh, we're going to specify that the community string is not public, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to specify some basic attributes. We're going to notify the service. We specify the service here, and we're saying that this service should be enabled, and it should start on reboot. Another thing that Chef does is profiles your system and gets a massive amount of information out of it. Uh, it uses a tool called Ohi to do that. 
So this is OHI. Uh, this is a bunch of information that came from a Linux machine. Uh, but OHI works on Solaris machines and will pull all of your zone information, all of your ZFS information, all of that stuff. Uh, and that is available for you to use across your infrastructure. And that infrastructure and information that it's gathered is also indexed. So you can start to do very clever things like look for it, compare it, get one machine to look and find out what the information is from another, run reports on it, do some calculations on it. So what this means is that we can decide what to declare in a dynamic way. So for example, what we're going to say, this is an execute resource. So when the execute resource runs, it's going to run the sysctl command. And it's going to calculate bytes and pages. It's going to do this. Uh, and we can dig into how this actually works. But this is more just an example of how we can do things dynamically. It's going to say, how much memory is there in bytes? How many pages are there? And then pass that in by calculation into the template. And on the end of that, after we've done this and configured this, execute this, which is that there. So that's an example of doing things. And you can do this in multiple phases. So that's a kind of a, a brief overview of the kind of thing that you can do. So let's, uh, let's drive uh, a little bit further in and see how do we actually go about this. Well, we're chefs, and we have recipes, and we have cookbooks. So when we talk about a recipe, what we mean is a collection of resources. So remember, resources are the things that we need to configure in order to make our infrastructure work. Uh, if you were uh, wanting to build, uh, build, uh, cook some dinner for somebody, and you decided that you wanted, uh, I don't know, to cook uh, Nepalese cuisine, <clears throat> uh, notwithstanding the fact that you could just go on the internet and do that, if you wanted to, if you were in a library and you wanted to find Nepalese cuisine, you'd probably go and find a book about Nepalese uh, cuisine, and there might be a whole bunch of different recipes in there. We have the same kind of metaphor. So cookbooks are a kind of a packaging system, so we can have a bunch of different recipes which solve different problems across your infrastructure, managing different resources, and they're collected uh, into cookbooks, along with all the various other bits and pieces that you might need in order to build your infrastructure. And what this means is, and this is, this is actually quite, quite unique, what this means is that you can reuse this. So if, if you have a look at uh, community.opscode.com, you'll see I think, uh, at the last count, 430 <coughs> shareable uh, cookbooks covering anything you can think of. And when I say shareable, I don't mean you can look at it and go, well, I, I guess I could take a few ideas from that. No, you can pick it up and you can use it straight away. And this is being done across, uh, across, the, across, the, across the world. Uh, and lots of the very large uh, infrastructures are now built with community cookbooks, which have been built by people who have shared these uh, in the public domain. And the exciting thing is that we're starting to see growth of these uh, applying specifically to Solaris and Solaris derivative systems. So uh, the basic concept then of how Chef works uh, is it uses a run list. So Chef is not really a server. It doesn't really do much calculation. It's not sitting there doing much. Chef is fundamentally a publishing platform. <clears throat> so you've got a chef server there, and it's all done via an API. So everything that you do when you talk to the chef server is over an HTTP API, a secure HTTP API. So a run list says, OK, I'm a node. What should I do? What should be on me? So we're saying that the recipe should have from the NTP cookbook the client recipe. So we stay that, the node which has a chef client, which is a, a very small program. The chef client runs on the node. It speaks to the API. The API, which is just a publishing platform, says, here is the NTP client cookbook. It gets pulled down to the node, and then the code is executed on the node, and it becomes configured, and now you have your NTP client set up. So now we decide that we might like to run an OpenSSH server there. Same thing. We add to the run list. OpenSSH server, and now the OpenSSH cookbook, which contains the server recipe, gets pulled down to the node. Okay, now we decide we might like to run Apache, and we're going to run a PHP website, so we need PHP as well. Same pattern, Apache cookbook, PHP cookbook, recipes, 
downloaded to the node 